I've been talking and uh, reading a lot from other people who practice Hellenic polytheism. Um, I consider that there's basically two main groups of Hellenic polytheists. Those who call themselves Neo-Hellenic uh, polytheists like myself or Neo-Hellenists. And then there's um, people who practice a reconstructionist path of Hellenic polytheism called, um, then they practice Hellenismos. So, um, it seems to me that there's a lot of people, um, primarily people who practice Hellenismos, who believe that um, one cannot call themselves a Hellenist, not just uh, someone who practices Hellenismos, but one, one cannot call themselves a Hellenist um, if they um, practice uh, witchcraft uh, and uh, you know practice magic and things like that. And I think that this comes from, I've observed quite a few different arguments for this, and I wanted to kind of go through and and refute those arguments. And this isn't really an attack on anybody. It's just my kind of scholarly opinion on it. Um, I'm going to be quoting a lot of different sources and things like that, all of them scholarly sources, so you can see where I'm getting my information and why I think it's completely logical to call oneself a Hellenist and practice witchcraft. I think the first problem is just a misunderstanding of what witchcraft is. Witchcraft is not just casting spells. Uh, the word witchcraft, if you break it down, um, the f word witch comes from the word wise. Um, it's got the same root word as the word wizard. Um, and, so, and the word craft, of course, implies implementing some sort of skill. So um, you know, if, you, if you put those two words together, wise and skill, you'll see that Witchcraft isn't just about magic, but it's about understanding the universe in, in a broader spectrum. It's about being a wise person. Part of being a wise person is doing the things that wise people do. If you understand how to make your life better and make the other people's lives better that are around you, then uh, a wise person would implement those skills. And that's the idea of witchcraft. Obviously, because we have a more modern understanding of what witchcraft is, we would then have several different disciplines under witchcraft um, in the modern age. Those would include um, mysticism, the occult, practicing magic, and um, several metaphysical disciplines as well. And we can find all those things in ancient Greece. Anyone who studied ancient Greece at all knows that there was mysticism and several metaphysical practices that were practiced in ancient Greece. Those are the easiest to find. Then, of course, we have scholars like Pythagoras who were um, occultists and alchemists and uh, practiced different metaphysical disciplines as well. And then, of course, there was the magic that was practiced in Greece, which a lot of people disagree with me on. One of the books that I have that I consider to be an authority on ancient Greek religion is called Greek Religion by Walter Burkard. And on page 55, he outlines different ways that magic was practiced in ancient Greece. So there's that, and uh, there's other books as well, and I can list some of those in the description of this video for you. Some people think that magic is something that not everybody is able to do. But that's not true. Um, magic is when someone creates change in accordance with their will. Um, and everybody can and does do that. It doesn't just d deal with the metaphysical universe, but it exists in everything we do. Every, every single time you change your universe, you do magic. Therefore, everyone practices magic. Um, and it's something that I've explained in previous videos, but I can take a minute to explain it to you again. Have you ever made a wish before blowing out the candles on your birthday cake, believing that when all the candles blew out, it would set your wish in motion? Have you ever wished upon a star? Regardless if your wish came true or not, you were casting a spell, sending energy towards a specific cause. Sometimes with our spells, we incorporate a prayer to a deity, enlisting the help of the divine to make our will be done. However, this is not necessary, um, but a lot of people do do that. Um, two kinds of, of magic exist from, from one of the modern understanding of it, which is high magic and low magic. High magic being magic that invokes a deity for a specific reason, and low magic just being more like practical magic. Um, and I think that there's cause for either to be practiced, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. In modern times, we categorize witchcraft into two different categories called high magic and low magic. Both have different disciplines. High magic is magic where you invoke a god for a specific purpose 
and a lot of those types of high magics originated in ancient Greece. Then there's the more commonly used low magic, which is more, more or less practical magic. Um, and that would, of course, deal in the magic that we do every day in our lives. So, once again, you know, not only is the practice of magic, was it practiced in ancient Greece, but it's practiced by everybody who does intentful actions today. You can't escape this. Which is basically understand the practice and how to use it better. Just like someone who practices yoga learns how to breathe better. Someone who runs marathons runs, knows, knows how to run better and use techniques on how to run better. We use techniques on how to use our energy better, which is do. I've also heard a lot of people say that magic is against nature and manipulates nature and, and is therefore offensive to nature deities. And I'd like people to remember that a lot of things that humans do, in fact, humans are geared to manipulate nature. If you are offended by the concept of manipulating nature, you shouldn't be watching this video because the laptop or the, the computer that you're watching it on, the electricity that runs through that computer, the house that you're living in or the apartment that you're living in are all manipulations of nature. These glasses that I'm wearing on my face is a manipulation of nature. You know, there are so many different manipulations of nature. Us wearing clothes manipulation of nature. So if you have a problem with manipulations of nature, you shouldn't be watching this video. In fact, you shouldn't be doing much of anything. Other arguments I've heard is that um, magic attempts to manipulate or usurp the power of the gods, and that's totally not true. Even in dealing with, with high magic, um, it's never about offending or trying to take something from a deity. It's about working with deities, not, not about usurping their power. If someone were to attempt to usurp the power of the gods, I'm sure they'd either get a quick smackdown or they'd be completely ignored. Other people have told me that they believe that practicing magic and practicing witchcraft would be considered arrogant in ancient Greece and would therefore have been punishable under the laws of uh, hybris or hubris um, in, in ancient Athens. And I don't believe that to be true. Uh, the reason is, is that, you know... Um, there's, I've seen no evidence to suggest that's what the laws of hubris were about. Um, you know, the readings that I've seen about people who are punished for that law were people who harmed people for no reason or did things for of extreme arrogance. I just don't see anything extremely arrogant about knowledge. In fact, there was a lot of people in who would say that ancient Greek culture was about seeking out knowledge. They considered themselves to be extremely civilized and uh, to be able to seek out different types of knowledge. In fact, a lot of the people today that were responsible for the Greek Empire set up libraries like uh, Alexander the Great, um, set up libraries so that everybody could learn. And so the, the idea that learning about things and implementing knowledge is, is somehow arrogant is it seems silly to me i mean that's not really what the laws of hubris were about and i could post an article for you guys for that i'd like to also note that there are gods and goddesses of greece associated with witchcraft and magic so that's once again it doesn't make sense to me why somebody would think that it needs to be shunned some people have said that uh, the ancient greeks actually feared witchcraft and shunned it and i can't really find much evidence of that um, i do find a lot of evidence of things like spell books and other things that existed in ancient Greece and we have remnants of today as well as occultism and things like that. So it, it doesn't really resonate with me that that, that that would be true. Perhaps maybe some of the peasantry feared witchcraft, but really didn't they fear a lot of things that if, you know, that we do today and consider normal, you know, if they saw somebody driving a car, they probably would have considered that witchcraft, you know, but today it's normal. And so we really shouldn't pay attention to what people feared back then because, you know, they feared the common cold. Um, because they, they didn't understand how to cure it. You know, um, today when we have a better understanding of things, we have a better idea of knowledge of things, we can, can look things up on the internet, we have all this big well of resources. Instead of just fearing things and shunning them without understanding them, we should take the time to understand what things are before we judge them, which is the whole reason about the, what this video is about. And I hope that this video has been informative to people, if you have any questions or comments, I'm going to leave the comments open. Of course, I'm going to turn the ratings off since a lot of people might be offended by this. But my intention is not to offend anybody. It's to educate. All right. Hail the gods of Greece and blessed be.